In today's video, guys, we are talking four things you could do when the time is right to get your lawn ready in spring. Okay, so before we get into this video, it is very important that you nail your timing with this. Keep an eye on your soil temperatures as well as your outside air temperatures. Now, I don't know about you guys, but here in Northwest Indiana, we're in a very iffy time right now where winter is kind of going in and out as we transition out of it into the springtime. So we're not necessarily ready to go yet. If you wanna gauge when it is time to go, it is a great time to keep an eye on your soil temperatures. You could do that a couple of different ways as we've talked about before. You could use a soil thermometer that you stick in the ground looks like that see that pretty cool right stick it in about this much do it in both sun and shade and when you see the soil peaking 54 55 degrees then that is go time to start getting down your applications now if you don't want to mess around with the soil probe you can actually go to a site that I highly recommend and that is greencastsoiltemperatures.com over there what you could do is you could type in your address your city your state what have you and then what it'll do is it'll give you a live reading of where your soil is at in time as well as the average for the past five to ten years check this out so what you can do with this awesome tool again is you type in the area and you could see a snapshot in time as to where your soil temperatures are right now so if you're in Indiana and it says your soil temperatures are around 48 50 degrees then that's the case that you're not ready to go with your applications yet but to take it a little bit further to be a little bit of a predictor you can actually use the averages to your advantage now what I mean by that is when you type in your city your state all of that and you're trying to see what your soil temperatures are or have been on a certain date you can take a look at those five to ten year averages and you can use those when to gauge if the weather's predictable of course like other years when the temperature should hit 55 degrees so if green cast soil temperature is saying hey february 28th we're not there yet but on average per the last five to ten years soil temperatures hit 55 degrees around mid to late march then that's a great gauge to know that hey i'm not there yet but based on weather my area i know how it works another couple of weeks mid to late march i should be good to go and do all these applications and now of course when you do figure that out just note that when the temperatures do hit 55 that they dwindle and stay there and that they do not look to be going down at some point within the foreseeable future I know that was a mouthful I'll try and break it down the best I can in the edit I'll put some captions up for you guys but essentially that's a good way to gauge when it is time to get your applications down for the season Number one, soil test. Now, this isn't something that everybody necessarily has to do. I recommend getting your application rate settings dialed in with your spreader, with your walking speed, with all of that stuff, learning the backpack sprayers, everything we've talked about in the past. I recommend you practice and master all of those basics first, right? Proper mowing, fertilizer, and irrigation could go a long way. But soil testing is good for those who have done all that, who have mastered all that, and they're looking for a way to up the level of their lawn game this season. A soil test is going to be a great thing to reference to throughout the season to see what you might be deficient in at the beginning of the season and what you need to, you know, just slowly implement into your program, if you will. So soil test, number one, as far as taking a soil test, it doesn't have to be as complicated as you think. You literally dig down a couple inches below the roots. Make sure you get just pure soil. You don't want any roots. You don't want any organic matter. You just want the soil about three to four inches deep. So then that way you can get a good soil solid reading on where your soil is at and it's not being cheated if you will by the organic material that is either your lawn or any dead decaying matter from the turf plants if you will number one soil test starter fertilizer now we've talked about this before but one of the things I wanted to do is I want to take an opportunity I've done so many products on this channel in the past showing you guys how to do certain things in your lawn with products you could find at the store if that's within your budget and that's all you can do that's great I'll actually link to some videos here but if you guys are looking to again get a little more advanced with your lawn care game and look for a way to have a little bit more um, flexibility if you will with your applications having things be a little more separated and unlocked then I I recommend you check out the products I have on my site. We have a variety of options for everybody, depending on the time of year, the situation, liquid and granular. Now, in this case, we're talking cool season, coming out of winter, going into spring. So a starter fertilizer is what you're going to want. Anything that has the three main macronutrients we always talk about, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Nitrogen is going to work on top growth. Phosphorus is going to work on root growth. And potassium is that good all-around element that's going to thicken the cell walls within the plant. MPK, you'll be okay 
okay as I always like to say with your starter fertilizer now there are some great products you could find at the store if you can find it it's within your budget great now I'm gonna offer an alternative to you guys again who are looking to up your game uh, we have one product for you guys that is 12 12 12 from our good friends at yard mastery we also have the 16 21 2 green pop from our good friends over at Green County fertilizer you can kind of pick whatever you want so if you want something with MPK like I talked about you can use that to compensate there however if you run into an issue where maybe you don't necessarily need phosphorus content because you have a lot of it in your soil you can get something with just the N and the K we have that that's the 2406 flagship product and then we also have that in liquid the 1801 green punch product and then later on as the season goes on we have a new product available and that is the 2600 green charge product again from our good friends over at Green County Fertilizer for anybody starting out I recommend one of those four products that I just talked about for your starter fertilizer your first application of the year crabgrass pre-emergent. Now crabgrass is something that a lot of us deal with, especially if we're new to lawn care. We don't have the thickest lawn yet. One thing we could do to get on top of that right away at the beginning of the season is to get down a crabgrass pre-emergent. Now this kind of goes back to something I was talking about earlier in the video, and that is, again, there are tons of great products at your local Home Depot, Menards, Lowe's, Scott's Holtz. That's a really great product that is within most people's budgets. I recommend you check it out. I highly recommend if you have a massive crabgrass problem that you consider something a little more potent like a dedicated pre-emergent product with little to no fertilizer value in there and the reason I recommend that is because the application if you will is a little more unlocked right when you increase one thing you don't have to worry about increasing the other because as we talked about earlier in the starter fertilizer segment you're going to accomplish those needs with a totally separate product so having two separate products especially pre-emergent product separated from the fertilizer product that is a little more potent that is going to give you more confidence when you put it down that even if you are a little bit on the lighter side you're going to be able to get control on that crabgrass before it emerges again because of the higher content value now again make sure you read the label on that label is law when soil temperatures hit 55 degrees of course if you do that you'll be good to go and then of course there's follow-up pre-emergent applications we recommend as well that we'll be talking about as the season progresses Okay, now this last one is going to be optional, but I highly recommend you do it anyway based on my experience with it, and that is to apply soil additives like the Next Specialty product. So like I talked about earlier, in conjunction with the fertility product that Green County Fertilizer makes in the Next line, they also have specialty products. A couple of my favorites that I like to apply in the spring is the RGS product at 3 ounces per thousand and the Airway product anywhere from 6 to 9 ounces per thousand in the springtime in conjunction with my 1801 app or any other granular or fertilizer for the most part going to work great in conjunction with that and helping break bonds in the soil loosen it up and allow for the rgs to work its magic and push the roots down where again they can obtain more nutrients to make the plant healthier and stronger you know what, should we throw a bonus in there? Absolutely, I think this is very important. Now, another thing I recommend you guys start doing as soon as it's applicable, start irrigating your lawn ASAP. You see, one of the problems we've ran into quite a bit this winter, might be the same for you, might not, depending on how hard you got hit here in Northwest Indiana. We got quite a bit of snow, and when comes a lot of snow, comes a lot of road salt. So one of the things I recommend you do to prevent that salt from doing any further damage to your lawn in any areas where it might've been accumulated pretty heavy, start running your sprinklers earlier a couple of times a week like we've always talked about in this video here start running them early in conjunction with the spring rains and then that way you have a better chance of washing that out so it doesn't do any damage to your turf if you guys do those couple of things in the springtime you will be good to go 